Hi everybody, Craig here. Welcome to Symphony of War, the Nephilim Saga. This is a new game for the channel, and when I say a new game, I also mean that it's actually a newly released game. It just came out on June 10th, 2022 on Steam. The developer is Dancing Dragon Games, and the publisher is Freedom Games. Now, Symphony of War is a tactical RPG that has um, a turn-based mechanic, and that's kind of right up my alley for, for my channel and the games that I really enjoy playing. So that's kind of one of the main reasons it came across my, my radar, so to speak. But there's actually another reason, and probably even a bigger reason, and that is that I've heard rumors that this game is something of a spiritual successor to one of my all-time favorite games. And I'm not talking about Age of Wonders 3 in this instance, although that's definitely on my list of favorite games. The game I'm talking about is Ogre Battle 64. Now, Ogre Battle 64, for those of you who maybe haven't heard of it or don't know what it is, um, it's a strategy RPG that is kind of really unique. It was a, a game on the Nintendo 64 console, so way back in the day. I remember playing it as a kid and just absolutely loving it. So as I said, it was a, a strategy RPG that had kind of a turn-based battle system, but also an interesting sort of real-time uh, command system on like a world map that you'd, you know, command your little troops around. And basically you got to manage an army that was composed of multiple different squads and each squad was composed of individual units and you could customize, you know, to the nth degree and it was phenomenal. You could, you know, choose character classes, you could recruit monsters and dragons and beasts and then you could level up your units and specialize their equipment and position and everything. It was absolutely fantastic, and I really haven't encountered anything else like it. Um, it, it. I should also say it had a phenomenal story and an amazing soundtrack. If anybody is uh, is interested in it, I'm actually hoping to eventually do a playthrough of it on the channel. So uh, let me know in the comments if you guys would be interested in that. But enough of my my gushing about it, uh, Ogre Battle 64. Um, as I said, I've heard that Symphony of War is a spiritual successor, so I thought it would be. Uh, excellent to feature on the channel and see what you guys think. So, without any any more yammering on my part, let's get started here. So, we're going to start a new game, and we're going to be playing on the hardest difficulty setting, that being Warlord difficulty. Uh, this means that enemy HP and attack power is going to be increased, and they say it's only for experienced players and choose at your own risk. Now, I should mention that I have played around with Symphony of War a little bit, just to get um, kind of familiar with it. But I am definitely not an expert, and I really haven't done much other than kind of just get the basics down. So I am going to leave tutorials enabled, and that's because I'm hoping it can kind of, you know, help me get a little better at the game. And also, maybe be a bit of an introduction for many of you who maybe haven't uh, in encountered this game before. So we can kind of learn as we go together, hopefully. And then I am going to enable permadeath. So this means that non-story characters that are incapacitated at the end of a mission are lost forever their resources will be refunded. So this is obviously, um, you know, ratcheting up the difficulty and the significance of characters being killed. So I'm hoping that that makes things even more interesting. So as I said, uh, without any further ado, let's begin Symphony of War, the Nephilim Saga. Ah, there you are, child of destiny. You've arrived at a very opportune time, you will find. Let me look into your heart. Who are you? Will your journey be marked by virtue, or will this land's people remember you as an adversary? When on death's door, what will you consider a life well lived? I did it all my way. I fulfilled who I was meant to be. Many will mourn my passing. Okay, so this is very reminiscent of Ogre Battle 64 at the beginning of the game, getting to answer kind of personal questions. And if, if I remember correctly, it dictated the starting units that you kind of began the game with. So I'm assuming that there's some kind of similar mechanic here with Symphony of War. But in any case, for this one, uh, I did it all my way is making me think of the, uh, the famous song, uh, you know, uh, it's probably made famous mostly by Frank Sinatra. Um, but I think I'm going to go with I fulfilled who I was meant to be. You were blessed with a child. If you could choose their fate, what would it be? A famous musician, a great general, a devout follower of the faith. I think I'm going to go with a great general. You must give up your most valuable possession. What is it? Your vast wealth, your battle prowess, or your faith? So, 
Wealth, not so much. Um, battle prowess could also kind of be like your physical health and your your strength. Um, faith, so I'm, I'm torn between your battle prowess and your faith. I think I'm going to go with your battle prowess because, you know, your physical health is obviously quite important. So, as a potential ruler in difficult times, what are your most effective tools? Your kind heart, your inspiring charisma, or fear? So when times get tough, what are you going to fall back on to kind of keep order and, and lead your people if you're a ruler? Um, I think I'm probably going to go with your inspiring charisma. What is the most important trait a leader should have? The ability to bring people together, an unshakable love for the people, the power to command respect and fear. Um, this one's kind of tricky. Um, I actually think probably the power to command respect and fear, hopefully more so on the respect side of things, but maybe, you know, making your enemies fear you as well is an important trait of a leader. So I'm going to go with power to command respect and fear. Which form suits me? I'm going to be playing as a male character. And you can probably guess the name I'm going to choose. We are going to go with Craig. Yes. Thank you. What an intriguing soul. Go, and I will see you here again when the time is right. Armitage, year 972, capital city, Empire of Viridia. By the gods, the child survived. And the father? Perished, fighting for the nobles, just like most of the young in this town. The mother prepared names for this. This one shall be named Craig. He is so beautiful. May he live to see a better world. Twenty-five years pass. The World of Tanra. In the 997th year of our age, three realms rule the land. The Desert Kingdom of Sayuna, whose wealth earned it the title of Kingdom of Gold. The technologically advanced Free Republic of Sandraka. And the hegemonic Empire of Viridia, the world's military and economic superpower where our story begins. One generation ago, multiple bids for the Viridian Imperial Throne plunged the land into war. This is known as the War of Viridian Succession. The long and bloody war ended with the coronation of Empress Florina. However, it left deep scars in the people's hearts as resentment against the excesses of the ruling class rose to the boiling point. Common people who had lost so much were forced to endure increasing hardships as the empire sought to rebuild. 25 years after the end of the succession war, a man named Antares, a battle-worn general, kidnapped the empress and formed his own army in an act of open rebellion. He now controls a territory in the forest known as the East Wall District. Driven by what he believes to be undue hardships by the central government, Antares threatens to sack the imperial capital if his demands are not met. The ambitious Prime Minister Casimir has called the General's bluff and has decided to take military action. He orders a force sent to Antares' stronghold at East Wall Fortress. Two young and promising Imperial Army officers, Craig and his longtime friend Zelos, 
have prepared to meet General Antares in battle. Little could they know how much their adventure would change the course of history. Imperial Army Encampment, East Wall Province. Let us raise a glass to my friend, Craig. Bet you all thought he wouldn't make it this far, now ready to lead his first squad into battle, but I knew better. Not in the celebrating mood, Craig? There's a lot on the line. The Empress's life is in our hands. I'm not worried. I doubt these guys can keep up with you. It helps having a one-man army in our midst. I'm just a man. We've got the gods on our side. I'm going to trust in my soldiers, not some idea. Don't tell me you believe in those fairy tales now. Don't underestimate the power of ideas. Look at how this empire is starting to forget the ideas that built it. With a proper leader, people would again feel a part of something. There would be no generals going rogue. We've come a long way since the academy, but now we face the real thing. Come, Craig, let's brush up a bit. It is like a game of chess. You will command groups of soldiers known as squads, and each squad will have a leader. You appear as blue, and the enemy team appears in red. Time to engage in combat. First, you must move your squad next to me. Select your squad, then select the tile next to my squad on the map to move. Okay, so this is a, a kind of a nice quick overview here of just sort of how to fight and how to maneuver on the battlefield. So you can see here's Craig. He's in a, a, a squad by himself. So we will do as Zealous instructed, move right up next to him. Right, now it's time to attack. Choose the attack option, then target me. Careful, defenders will counterattack if they can. This isn't exactly fair. I am one soldier with one sword. You're going to command a whole army someday. You must think of yourself as a leader, and your followers are your sword and shield. First things first, show me what you've got. Okay, so we can attack Zelos. <laughs> Boy, yeah, you can you can see why Craig is saying that it's not exactly a fair fight. Um, the threat rating, which is kind of a measure of like overall capability of the squad, uh, Zelos has more than double what Craig does. So I suspect this won't go so well, but let's do it. Yeah, seven damage. Ooh, forty-one damage. Yeah, so. Zelos is a Zweihander class, which basically is a, uh, a more advanced unit, so hence why he's so much stronger. Not bad. Now let's raise the stakes. You're now leading a squad with a good balance of troop types. You've got heavily armored troops in front, or heavy infantry. Always rely on heavy infantry to serve as the backbone of your army, not only to protect weaker allies, but to rush down and attack. Your squad also has three archers. These long-range troops are not as sturdy, but can attack from a distance, avoiding counterattack. Your turn is up for now. Access the menu and end turn to proceed. All right, so now you can see that we've got those three heavy infantry, and then we've also got the three bowmen in the back, and then Craig in the middle still a little bit worse for wear, but we will end our turn. Now you're ready. Attack me and try to take me down. Well, I suspect things will go a lot better this time, given that we now have a full squad and Zelos is still by himself. Yeah, you can see our threat rating is now over 5,000 compared to Zelos' 1,900. So let's do it. Nice, heavy damage there. You can see, though, that Zelos' attack hits all the melee units in front, so something to remember that his attacks will hit multiple units in, in a, a big cleave kind of swipe like that. Nothing to it. There's a great deal more to learn. But for now, you should be able to lead our forces against Antares. As we progress, tutorials will pop up, and you'll be able to access them whenever you want. Just a nice quick overview there. 
Aren't you a bit early, Scout? We saw Antarza's men celebrating in the outlying villages. The rebels have begun raiding the locals. General Antares has stooped to this. How far he has fallen since the succession war. Send word to the capital. Maybe they can send us a real army. You heard that, right? I did. Zelos, I know what you're thinking. How do you plan on explaining this to the higher-ups? Bah, don't worry about them. You, me, and just our troops. Once we take down this rebellion, we'll be celebrities. What say you? Okay, Zelos, I'm with you. But I'm calling the shots this time. Fine by me. I've got your back, Craig. Good. Looks like they haven't sent much out yet. You should take these guys out to get some battle experience. You can move your squad next to the enemy soldiers and attack. If you run into trouble, I'm right behind you. Take a break, Zelos. I've got this. Chapter 1. Rebellion. Alright, well here we are. Our first kind of real battle. So, um, you can see that we've got Craig and we've got Zelos. So Zelos has, if we take a look... So he is a level 8 Zweihander, which is again why he was so tough when we were trying to fight him. Um, and you can see here, so you've got kind of the overview of the unit. So you've got their hit points, their name, then you've got their uh, like class, their experience, and then their class points, which is CP there. And that's kind of like their mastery rating of, of how, uh, how much they've mastered their current class. That becomes important when you're trying to... Uh, change classes to a more advanced unit, uh, like a, a more advanced class type. Um, so you have to master the class first before you advance. Um, then their affinity, and that has multiple implications. One of them being their stat growth. Um, then you've also got traits, and I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure how traits work yet. I'm still learning that one, but uh, it does look like they're learnable, so we can hopefully obtain some uh, traits later on. And then on the right side there, it's kind of their overall summary of their different stats there. So you've got things like their armor, their strength, magic, skill, and leadership. And then resources used, which we'll learn a little bit more about um, moving forward here. But suffice to say that certain classes require certain resources in order to um, select that class, basically. Uh, and those resources aren't actually permanently allocated. They are just allocated while the unit is occupying that class. Once you change to a different class, you'll get those resources back effectively. Um, okay, so we know that Zwe uh, Zelos is a Zweihander, level 8, very strong. And then we've got two bowmen, both at level 2 here. So then let's compare that to Craig's squad. And so Craig is a level 1 captain. Um, he does have the guardian trait. And then if we look here, Emma, we have a medic who is loyal. And uh, medics are very, very useful as they can keep our, our units alive with uh, healing in battle and out of battle. And then we've got two fighters here that are going to form our our, our kind of melee battlers. So um, they're all at level one, though. So we definitely want to try and get experience oh with people. Craig. So what I'm going to oh do, homeland. again, because uh, Zelos is so much stronger, we're going to try to prioritize Craig I in terms of getting strong. experience. So let's move up next to the bowman and we will attack. And these bowmen don't have any melee units to protect them, so this should be a relatively straightforward battle. So let's do it. Oh yeah, excellent. Okay, we took a little bit of damage, but the medic was able to heal it. And we have full health again, so perfect. Good experience gain. And then <clears throat> Zelos can advance here. And we'll end our turn. Uh, now, before I end it, I should mention there is... Um, a few things we can look at here, so you can see squad list is going to show us all the squads currently on the map. So there's R2, Zealous, and Craig, and then here's all the enemy squads listed. Um, we've also got a few other things here. One thing to look at is mission info. So this is kind of the overview of kind of uh, the, the mission and our objectives for this one. So you can see our victory condition is to seize East Wall Fortress. Our defeat condition is Craig is defeated in all battles. Uh, or is, excuse me, Craig is defeated in battle, so if basically if Craig is killed. And then our challenge missions, we need to attack from a hill using Jules' squad. And then we also have to seize all map objectives. We, have, we want to try and finish in 11 turns or less. And then we've got some uh, ob objectives that we need to capture and some target squads that need to be neutralized. And those are the squads with the little stars kind of next to them. Um, 
So we just need to keep all those things in mind. So here you can see an example. Wolfgar squad here is an example of a squad that is uh, one of those ones we have to target because they have that star. Same goes for Julius here. All right, so let's end the turn. Okay, so now we're coming under attack, but we can counterattack. Nice. Oh, perfect. Yeah, big damage. Oh, and a free action. Nice, and we got the kill. That's perfect. So we did take a little bit of damage. Yeah, we took some damage in that fighting, but we can heal it back by having support units, such as the medic, in your squad. While they cannot attack, support units help greatly to keep soldier losses to a minimum. Next, we need to capture that town so we can liberate it from the rebels. Move any squad to the town's front gate and seize... Okay, so yeah, we definitely need to get over to the city of Kallenberg here. And as you can see, we'll get a hefty gold reward, and we'll also get some faction experience that will kind of improve our overall kind of uh, army capability, I guess you could think of it. You know, we get better research options and other things available to us. Um, I'm still kind of learning the ins and outs of that, but effectively it's, it's a good thing, and we definitely want more of it. Um, and I believe we also get some leadership experience with whichever squad actually moves there. Um, so I think what I'll do is I will move Craig in and have him seize the... Now, one thing I should note here is that we can heal on the, uh, the world map here. The only thing is we only have a limited number of uses of it, so we want to make sure we conserve it. You can see we have three, three uh, opportunities to do it. The ones that we heal in battle, that, that just happens every battle. We don't run out of that. But on the world map, we only have a limited number per healer in a squad. So just something to remember there. All right, so let's seize it. Nice, yeah, and there are leadership improved. Good. We liberated a town and got some gold and faction XP, or stars, for our trouble. We'll need gold for a lot of things. Recruiting new troops, hiring mercenaries, buying artifacts, among others. Faction experience allows us to increase faction rank. As faction rank increases, our reputation will improve among the people. This will yield better shop prices, discover new technology, attract new recruits, and intimidate our enemies. The squad who captures objectives gets leadership and loyalty experience as well. So that's great. We definitely want to try and get that with, um, with our squads. The Imperial Army has already arrived much sooner than I expected. Wolfgar, I'm trusting you to lead our troops here. If you hold the river fortress, we should be safe here. I'll make them regret coming here. Don't worry, General. Looks like we made it just in time. Are you ready for this, Sybil? Are you kidding, Jules? I've been waiting ages for a chance to prove my mettle. Come and get it, rebel scum. Your squad has tougher soldiers, so should stay in front. Mine will provide long-range archer attacks from a safe distance. See that hill? That's high ground, very useful, especially for archers like me. Move me onto the hill so I can shoot further than normal. Over there, to the east. I think that's Jules, a fellow Imperial Academy cadet of mine. We should meet up with them and join all our forces together. Alright, so we definitely need to get Jules and Sybil over to Craig so that they can... That's what these little um, exclamation points mean. I think it's that we need to have a conversation, basically. So, um, first of all, though, let's see if we can fight our way over there. So, we'll do what Jules suggested and go to the hill, and that's going to increase our range. So, normally, we would, we would only have a range of two here with our archers, but because we're on the high ground, we can shoot one further. You can see here is Noel's squad, which is led by one melee unit and then three bowmen. Now, ordinarily, bowmen would be able to retaliate against our ranged attack, but because we're attacking them at the edge of our uh, attack range, which is outside of their range, because remember, we're on the high ground and they aren't, they won't be able to retaliate. So we have basically a free attack here. Oh yeah, big damage. Excellent. So that's going to make things easier now for Sybil's squad here. Um, and let's actually take a look. So... Sybil is a level 2 priestess. This is kind of the uh, the upgraded version of the medic that I have in my squad, uh, Craig's squad, that is. 
Um, very, so this is a, a great healer, very, very useful. And then we have an apprentice, level one, who is uh, like a mage kind of class. And then we have two level one spearmen who are going to be very powerful melee units. So that's perfect. So what we'll do is we will move Sybil over and try to kill off this bowman that's been weakened by Jules and his bowman. Nice. Ooh, we took some damage, but thankfully we healed it without too much trouble. Nice, and there's the kill. That's exactly what we needed. Okay, and now Zelos can advance all the way over here. And then we will end our turn there. Okay, we're taking some archer fire. Could be able to retaliate. Oh, I guess not. Oh, is that unit on high ground maybe? I'm not sure. Have to check. Oh man, look at that. Barely taking any damage at all. Wow, that Y-hander hit is crazy strong. Look at that, just obliterating the enemy. Now, let's figure out why that bowman was able to hit us from so far away. I think there's a hill there. If we can take that river fortress, the path to the main enemy base will be clear. Forts give defense bonuses and allow archers to shoot further. And that goes for both sides, so we can't underestimate those defenders. Okay, so that makes sense. So... The fort acts like a better version of a hill in that it provides defense and range bonus to uh, ranged units there. And yeah, okay, this is a hill. You can see in the top left corner there, hill 13, 14. So that's why this range unit was able to attack us and we weren't able to retaliate. That makes perfect sense. Um, you know what? We could just step on in and basically use Craig to try to eliminate the bowman here. Yeah, you know what? This is great. Nice. Good heal as well. Perfect. Oh, and a level up. That's exactly what we need. We need to make sure that our um, sort of less powerful units get leveled up so that we aren't just relying on Zelos, basically. Okay. Um, let's move Jewels over. And then we can attack. And now this unit does have a medic, so the, some of the damage we do will be healed, but not all of it, I hope. Okay. Yeah, so they uh, the medic healed some of it, but we did a little bit of damage. And that will hopefully make things a little bit easier for Sybil here. Now let's see if we can get the kill. Okay. Oh, and that's too bad. I was hoping that the medic would actually kill one of the melee units up front because... If you can kill all of the other units, then the um, the healing unit will surrender. So that would have been preferable, but oh well. Now we can finish this unit off with uh, Zelos here. Getting a little bit of experience for those bowmen at least, and a little bit for Zelos, although not nearly as much since he's so high level already. Okay, we'll end the turn there. Okay, Sybil's coming under attack, but she should be able to retaliate. Nice, some healing there. That's great. Oof, that magic attack is huge. See that town? To win wars, we must secure objectives. Objectives can be towns, mines, stables, or military bases. Towns like this or gold mines provide gold. Any of our squads can capture objectives. There. That's Eastwall Fortress, home base of the enemy. That's a heavily fortified castle, like most home bases. It provides defensive bonuses to soldiers stationed there. Do not underestimate any defender, even these clowns. There will be times when we are operating out of a home base. When that happens, you must defend it at all costs. If an enemy reaches our home bases, it will force us into defeat. Okay, so basically, yeah, if, if we have a home base, we can't let the enemy take it. 
And most of the time, we're going to be having to attack and capture the enemy home base, which makes sense. All right, so Craig can move up and attack the archers up there. But before we do that, let's see if we can use Sybil maybe to initiate a conversation. Well met. You're with the Imperial Army? Name Sybil. Battle Maiden of Viridia. Jules and I were sent up the river to try and outflank the rebels. That's an impressive title, but you wear the garb of a temple priestess. Yeah, so what? Healing's just as important as hurting, isn't it? Of course. We're fortunate to have a priestess among us. And I, I totally agree. I mean, um, and yeah, we can we can reset the movement without um, confirming it, so that's great. Um, as I said, the healing is super important because otherwise your units really can't recover health easily. So uh, we'll do the same with Jules here. We just can't help crossing paths, Jules. Looks like we're in this together, huh? Craig, what an honor to fight by your side in our first mission. But Central Command didn't say you'd be here. Was there some sort of mistake? We decided to improvise. Anyway, glad to have your rangers here among us. With clever planning, your troops can pick off enemies without fear of a counterattack, unless they have their own archers, of course. So, you're leading this mission? Wow, I always knew you'd do great things, Craig. Oh, come on, Jules. You'd say that no matter what I end up doing. Alright, so that takes care of the conversation. So yeah, these are both um, allies that uh, Craig knows kind of from the Academy, or at least Jules anyway. And then Sybil is a friend of Jules. So we will move Jules up and we'll seize the Iron Mine. We've secured an Iron Mine. With the three iron we just gained, we can upgrade our troops to more advanced classes when between chapters. The resources are not consumed, just allocated, meaning we can change classes without any risk at all. Feel free to experiment. So that's what I was kind of mentioning earlier, is that, you know, we can, uh, we don't have to commit entirely to a, um, a class. We can, you know, you can change the class and you don't end up having to worry about the resource being spent forever, basically. And, uh... When I was looking at the permadeath option, when it said that resources would be refunded, that's what it's talking about. So if I had a unit that was, you know, needed resources to become the class that it was, if that unit dies in battle and it's permanently dead, I at least get refunded the, the resources that were allocated to that class. So that's what it meant there. All right, so we're going to heal some of Sybil's units here. Uh, the spearmen are a little worse for wear, so we'll drop a heal on one of them. And then Craig is in pretty good shape. So I think with Craig, we will just attack aggressively here. And we can move in with Zelos to get the kill as well, if necessary. Let's go like this. And we can attack Julius here. Hopefully we can get the kill. Perfect. We're going to take some damage. All right, nice. We, we can handle that. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Okay, we cleared out the river fort. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to send Zelos over this way to capture um, this city over here. Because again, we need to capture all the cities uh, to complete our objective. So let's end our turn there. All right, well, so far so good. We've really got them on the run now. The river fortress is ours. Time to take down the local rebel commander at Eastwall. Damned Imperial dogs. They are really this ruthless? The rest of you, get out there and stop them. Our cause will not be snuffed out here. Looks like we've got another fight on our hands. Craig, we're counting on you as the army leader to destroy the enemy. Hopefully their leaders will get the message and lay down their weapons. Well, looks like we've got reinforcements here. So we've got a heavy infantry with three archers, two spearmen with a priestess, and two spearmen with a priestess. Okay, so we got to watch out because there is one that has ranged capability. So presumably we will take some counterattacks. I think it would be nice to try to funnel them in and then kind of use this choke point here at the bridge to our advantage. And we also have the fort. So something we could do is actually put Jules and his rangers here onto the fort that would give us um well better range and then also 
protection, but I'm almost thinking it might be better to actually have one of our units there, and that way they're protected against ranged attacks even better. So I think we'll move Craig there, and we'll just wait. Um, I don't want to use up one of my heals if I don't have to. And then Jules can sit like... That, or excuse me, uh, Zellos can sit there. Sybil will sit right here, ready to heal if need be. And then with Jules, we will advance like this and kind of hang back just a little bit. Stay strong, everyone. Oops, okay. And that's going to do it for our turn. So hopefully they get aggressive and, and try to attack me here. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was hoping for. Ooh, ouch. Looks like we took, like, a critical hit there. Yikes. Okay, thankfully we healed it. Dang, we didn't get any kills. Oh, nice free action. Oh, and a free heal, too. Perfect. Okay, at least we wounded them there. That's good. We killed one of the uh, melee units. That's good. Okay, now we're going to take the range damage, but we're in the fort, so we should take less. Yeah, there we go. Nothing to it. Oh, and a couple of free attacks there and a leadership upgrade. That's great. So that free action gave us some extra healing. All right. So now what we should be able to do is move Jewels up and soften them up a little bit with some ranged attacks, actually, which wouldn't be so bad. Let's do that. Nice, okay. And then we should be able to do it again with Zelos, actually. We might be able to kill that Spearman. Oh, shoot. Not quite. Yeah, most of the damage went to the Priestess, which is kind of a shame. Um, all right, well, unfortunately, now we're going to just have to use our attack here on this unit. But then we do have Sybil who can step up. And then the Priestess should surrender. There we go. Very nice. Oh, and we got an item there, a Shinobi Gi. Um, I believe that's an artifact that I think we can equip once the battle is over. That's pretty cool. Okay, Sybil. Sybil is in pretty good shape, so I think we're fine. We can advance with Sybil and then go after this unit. Just have to be careful. We don't want to lose that Spearman who's a little bit worse for wear, but I think we'll be fine. And we do have Sybil there to heal, so yeah, there we go. We're fine. Oh, yeah, we're, we're totally fine. Nice, big magic damage there. Excellent. Yes, yeah, so we killed off the heavy infantry and one of the bowmen. And then that'll do it for our turn. Oh, and I, you know what? I almost forgot about that village over there. I still need to capture it. Shoot. Okay, nice. At least we were able to counterattack there. Ouch. Oh, big damage. Yikes. Okay, thankfully, we were able to heal the big damage, but we are taking quite a bit of punishment. That wasn't too fun. All right. Yeah, and I totally forgot about this, so I'm going to send Zelos over to capture this before I forget about it. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. And then... Now, with Jewels here, I can attack um, Barad, probably get the kill. Hmm. Just trying to think what would be best. I'm just getting started. It would almost be better for Jewels to attack... Ra Actually, no, they have the Priestess, so that's... Yeah, you know what? Let's... Hmm. All right, let's attack with Sybil here and see if we can we can finish this unit off. Hoping we won't get in too much trouble here. Nice. Okay, we killed one of them and we got the heal, which is what we needed. And I, I hate that the mage attacks that. Nice, that's what we needed. Perfect. That, that extra attack just saved us. I was going to say, I don't like that the mage attacked the priestess because we really just needed to kill the melee units, but that's fine. And now we can actually use Craig to mop up and get some extra experience here, which is what I wanted. So let's do that. Perfect. There's a nice heal as well. And a leadership upgrade. That's good. Okay. 
Um, now, Jules can advance over this way, and we're going to send Jules probably over to grab this village here. That's going to do it for our turn. Okay, great. So, now we have to figure out how we want to fight Wolfgar. And if we look at Wolfgar's stack, so he's a level 8 soldier. That's going to be tough. And then he's got two level 2 archers. So his his unit composition is kind of similar to Zelos's here, where he's got a powerful level 8 unit up front, and then a couple of uh, strong bowmen to kind of flank. So, uh, in, in the back, I mean. So, yeah, that's going to be tricky. Um, I'm probably going to try to initiate the attack with Craig. I just have to be careful because I obviously don't want to lose any of my units or, you know, have Craig die. So first things first, though, let's grab this village while we're here. There, we can seize that. Nice leadership upgrade. How can I help, my lord? All right. Now with Sybil, sure. I'm going to advance. Now we have to be careful because he is in the fort, so he should get free range i'm pretty sure on his ranged attack so i'm actually going to move her like this and then put a heal onto as silly as this might seem i want my units at full health when i'm going into this battle so we'll heal up as best we can and then one two three so we can put craig here and then do a self heal on himself perfect okay and we'll end it there. Remember, we have to get this done in 11 turns, so we still have a few turns left. All right. So now we could do some ranged attacks, but my concern is that because they're in the fort, they're going to have a lot of protection, and Jules really isn't in the best shape. Um, let's see. Sybil does ha has some more healing, but I don't want to risk Jules' stack. I get the feeling that because they're in there, they're just going to take a... Uh, very little damage and then do quite a bit in return to really hurt me. So I think what I'll do instead is I want to use Craig to attack. This is a little bit risky, though, because I could potentially lose my units because I'm facing such a strong adversary. But we're going to give it a shot at least. Oh, I'm scared, though. Ugh. Yeah, okay, we have a better threat rating and we have high morale. So let's try it. Okay, nice. We actually did quite a lot of damage. We didn't take all that much. We took a fair bit, but we can heal it. Oh, and we didn't get the kill. Shoot. Yikes, okay. Oh, nice. At least we got a free action there. That helped. Dang it. It would have been really nice to get that kill. Okay, you know what? Now it might actually be worth it to send Zelos up. Or maybe Jules, actually. Let's see how much... Ah. Uh, what I'm thinking is I could send... Zelos up and attack with the bowman just to kill off the um, the melee unit there. Just to provide a little bit more protection for Craig's army. Because again, we're going to suffer a counterattack here. One thing I will do with Sybil is I will step up and drop a heal on the weakest fighter, at the very least. Okay. Again, I think it's probably worth doing this with Zelos, so... We are going to suffer a counterattack, and it is going to be pretty dangerous for our bowmen, actually, as they are kind of in rough shape. Oh, I don't know. Maybe this isn't worth it. I don't want to risk losing a bowman, but I also don't want Craig Stack to lose that fighter. Because what I'm concerned about is that if they attack, the soldier up front's going to get a free attack, and then both bowmen are going to get an attack as well. So because my one fighter is only at about like 60 health, if that fighter gets attacked, he's pretty much done for but if i can kill off oh i'm i might regret this but all right let's do it oh i hate this i just want to kill the soldier oh i'm scared okay nice we got the kill but now how much damage oh, okay that wasn't bad at all <laughs> i was i was worrying about nothing and we got a nice level up too okay great now we're in much better shape uh we have that village captured by jewels so we'll just way. leave him there i think Stay strong, everyone. Uh, we'll move over a little bit here. Want to keep him kind of out of the danger zone. And yeah, we've done everything else on the map, so we'll end our turn. We'll probably suffer an attack here, but that's fine. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I was expecting this. Ow, oof, that was some big damage. But our counterattack did quite a bit. Nice, and there's the kill. 
Nice, and we got class mastery up with our medic. That's perfect. Okay, well, I think what we'll do is we'll move Craig on to Eastwall Fortress and um, seize the objective here. Nice. Chapter complete. All right, so here's kind of our breakdown of the scenario. Nice. Okay, so we um, had five out of five objectives captured. We took less than the max turn limit there. And key squads, we killed all four key squads. We attacked from a hill with Jules' squad. We seized all map objectives. We had two priestesses surrender to us. And uh, you can see there the bounty for that. And then we had um, rank S. I'm assuming that's the highest ranking. And 50 stars. So uh, I'm very happy with the outcome there. And, and importantly, we didn't have any of our units die. And again, remember, permadeath is enabled. So... That would have been the, the scariest part, would have been losing a unit. So I'm glad that didn't happen. Inner Keep, East Wall Fortress. The Imperial Army has certainly wasted no time. We've got to escape the cent to Centurion's Rest. And you think I will just willingly go with you? You will. We both know that the snakes in the capital cannot be trusted. You're much safer here, away from their schemes. And Taras, you are going to get yourself killed. You don't deserve this. I have already given my life. But so too will my men if we do not escape immediately. Please, we must go to Centurion's Rest. Well, there you have it. We've uh, we've completed chapter one, and we've learned a little bit about this supposed rebellion. It, it does seem like the Empress might actually be... Well, she doesn't seem to be quite the prisoner that, that is purported there in, in that intro kind of dialogue. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next, and also to find out kind of more about the squad management system, which again, I really don't have a lot of experience with. So uh, all in all, though, I'm, I'm very happy with this game so far. Let me know what you guys think. Is this one that you... Um, are liking so far? Are you interested to see more? Um, again, and for those of you maybe that are familiar with Ogre Battle, Ogre Battle 64, um, are you guys getting kind of that, that sort of same vibe from this game? Which I definitely am. Um, but anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this episode. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one.